Hi, Emily. I hope you're doing okay. I hope you feel better, and I look forward to seeing you in class soon. Here is the answer to the problems that you asked about. Number 19 is pretty much this. I hope I wrote it correctly. And basically, we remember that when we see h of g of x, we could also think of it as h of g of x. And so that means taking the g of x function and placing it into the h of x function. So h of g of x, or this, would be equal to a 4 x plus 1 quantity squared minus 2. Notice that I took the g of x function and put it in for h of x, and put it into the h of x function. And I think you had that. I think that was fine. What it looks like you forgot when um, handling this problem is that when you multiply, when you square 4x plus 1 times 4x, or 4x plus 1, you're multiplying 4x plus 1 times 4x plus 1. So that means that you need to employ the FOIL method. 4x times 4x is going to be 16x squared. Then you're going to do a 4x times 1, and then 1 times 4x, and that's going to give us an x term of 8x. Then 1 times 1 will give us 1. And at that point, you're going to join the only two like terms, which are those constant terms. So I get 16x squared plus 8x minus 1. And that's my answer. And let's go ahead and look at the next one. So I'm going to take this one and move it away a little bit. And let's see if we can look at this problem. All right. So looking at this next guy, um, similar situation. However, notice that what we're, oops, what we're supposed to plug in here when we're done is negative 2 plus x. After we get the function, the g of f of x function, right? After I figure out what that is, then within that, I'm going to, let me highlight what I want, I'm going to place this thing in for x when I'm done, all right? So watch what I do. I'll take the f function and I'll put it into the g function because g of f of x, right? So my equation, my function looks like 2, so g of f of x, if I do that, Right? This is not the same problem that we're asking about. These two are the same. This one is not. So if I do g of f of x, I'm going to put 2 times um, the quantity of x squared plus 3x minus 2. I'm going to simplify that first. If I simplify that, I end up with 2x squared plus 6x minus 2. Now I'm going to plug in, let me use my highlighter pen again, I'm going to plug in 4x, this negative 2, um, negative 2 plus x. So here's a function, blah, blah, blah. Here's the way I write the function in generic terms. And this is saying, hey, analyze the function g of f of x for negative 2 plus x. So now I'm going to plug that into this mess. And I get, let's see, let me not use a highlighter for that. I'm going to get 2 times negative 2 plus x, quantity squared, plus 6 times negative 2 plus x minus 2. And with a little bit of algebraic maneuvering, I should be able to do this fine. This is going to be another situation where I need to use the FOIL method. So this will really turn out to be 2 times 4 minus 4x plus um, x squared. If I were to FOIL that out, I believe that works out. And then I'm going to distribute this 6, and I get um, plus Oh, I shouldn't say plus. I get minus 12 um, plus 6x, if I'm distributing, minus 2. And now if I have a good time and join my like terms together, first let me distribute it again, right? Minus 8x plus 2x squared. If I join my like terms together, I should get the answer that um, we had in the text. So there's only one 2x squared term. Join these guys together, the only x squared ter x term, and I get a minus 2x. And then I join this guy and this guy and this guy, and I end up with negative 14 and a positive 8, which gives me a negative 6. So this should be the answer that you got for that problem, okay? I hope that you're doing okay. I look forward to talking to you soon, my dear. Have a good one. Bye-bye.